I'll tell you what. It was a, a absolutely beautiful day here in Los Angeles, California. It, this is the magical time of the year when I spend most of the day texting stop to Nancy Pelosi. And we had the week off last week. Did you know we were off last week, Guillermo? Yes, you You did know, okay. Because I know sometimes you like to come sit on the stool anyway. No, 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 no. It was, did you have a good week? Was it? It was great, Jimmy. I spent a lot of time with my son and my wife. Very nice. Did you watch baseball after the Dodgers got eliminated, or was that it? That's it, Jimmy. No that more. Was I was so disappointed. Well, so. I'll tell you then. The World Series starts on Friday. It's the Phillies versus the Houston Astros. The Phillies beat the Padres, uh, and the Astros swept the Yankees. Houston won four games. They won game four last night, and um, in the crowd last night was the most repulsive man in America, Ted Cruz. <laughs> Ted was in town in New York promoting his new book, Vomit Baby. This is what his mother called him. <laughs> but look, put him back up. Look at this guy in a bright orange button down, dark blue Walmart greeter's vest, pretending, <laughs> pretending he drinks beer, <laughs> soaking up the sadness of the crowd. You know, you would think Ted Cruz would be unwelcome in the place like the Bronx. And if you did think that, you would be correct. <laughs> you, you racist piece of <laughs> I didn't even realize Ted had family in New York. <laughs> so even though they lost the game, I think New York won the battle last night. The main event in New York today was the tax fraud and grand larceny trial of the Trump Organization, which is now underway. Two Trump Organization entities are charged with nine counts of tax fraud, grand larceny, and falsifying business records in what prosecutors say was a 15-year scheme to defraud authorities by failing to report and pay taxes on employee compensation, or as the Trumps call it, a slow Tuesday. Trump <laughs> himself is not a defendant in the case. He's like, I never met the Trump Organization. I don't know anything about it. If convicted, though, the Trump Organization could get hit with up to $1.6 million in fines, which doesn't seem like much after all. The irony is, if you really want to take down the Trump Organization, all you have to do is let Trump keep running it. You don't have to take them to court. <laughs> Over the weekend, Trump also received a subpoena from the January 6th committee. The subpoena lays out 19 areas of inquiry they want to discuss with Trump. Number one being, why didn't you do anything to stop the insurrection while it was happening? Going all the way to number 19, which is, did you seriously bury your ex-wife on the golf course? <laughs> Trump has been te reportedly telling aides that he would agree to submit to the subpoena if his testimony is aired on live TV. But he, even he is not that stupid. The only way they're getting Trump to put his hand on a Bible is if they hide it up a waitress's skirt. He's not going <laughs> on. And then, and then, of course, we have the whole other thing about hiding documents at Mar-a-Lago, which, according to the Washington Post, he had highly sensitive intelligence on China and on Iran's missile program stashed in his golf course house, which makes you wonder, why would Donald Trump need information on Iran's missile pro? Is he planning to fire Don Jr. into space? <laughs> Bob Woodward of the Washington Post has something interesting in the works. Tomorrow, he's, he's releasing audio from 20 interviews he did with Trump during his last year in office. You understand, Trump did 20 interviews with a guy whose first two books he called very boring and fake. He did 20 interviews in one year. I don't speak to my mother that many times in a year. <laughs> but this is what he was doing at work all day. So today, Woodward uh, provided a few snippets of what he has in store, including Trump waxing poetic about his poison pen pal, Kim Jong-un. You meet somebody and you have a good chemistry, and there is a lot of truth to it. You meet a woman. Yeah. In one second, you know whether or not it's all going to happen. OK? We had a very good chemistry together. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Did Donald Trump have sex with Kim Jong-un? I didn't even know they were dating. This is... 
All that talk about launching missiles, it was right in front of us the whole time. <laughs> Speaking of chemistry, even though Trump still hasn't officially thrown his MAGA hat in the ring for 2024, he has reportedly been talking about who his running mate will be, and that running mate is none other than Marjorie Taylor Greene. You remember Marjorie, the racist shower drain clog? Well, <laughs> Trump said to be thinking about her as his possible VP. Uh, poor Eric is like, does this mean she's my new mommy? But <laughs> could you imagine that? I mean, the only thing those two should be running together is a Hooters in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> and we thought it couldn't get any crazier than Sarah Palin. I do, I want to say I have a nice story to share that involves Donald Trump tangentially. Uh, some of his supporters showed up at a comedy club, Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club in New Jersey a couple of weeks ago. Maybe you saw this online, uh, where they made a very unsuccessful attempt to heckle a young comedian named Ariel Elias. What's your question? Did you vote for Donald Trump? Did I vote for Donald Trump? What do you think? No. I can just tell by your jokes you voted for Biden. Why are we going All right. I can tell by the fact that you're still talking, but nobody wants you to, that you voted for Trump. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys about this, and then we'll move on. I'm so insecure. I went and got an IUD. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. Come on, I think you're Yo, I'm never going to people ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, you can't handle anything better than that, right? <laughs> so I saw that and I tweeted uh, in support of Ariel and then she wrote back to me, can I make my late night debut on your show? And I said, yes. And now she's here tonight, making her <laughs> late night debut. Yeah. 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 see that? Good things do happen every um, once every 18 weeks or so. Ariel will be here with us uh, later tonight. In other comedy news, Herschel Walker is running for <laughs> the Senate in uh, Georgia, and he's had quite an October. Somehow, I don't know, he's, somehow he's only two and a half points behind his opponent, Senator Warnock, despite uh, the abortion revelations, the kids he kept quiet, the alleged charity donations no one could seem to track down, a police badge he showed off, even though he is not a police officer. <laughs> Let's just say Herschel has a lot of damage to control. So this weekend, he sat down with the always curious Brian Kilmeade of Fox News to explain <laughs> that a beast has been awakened. I take offense to someone like uh, Senator Warnock saying the things about me that he's saying, which are lies, because they want this seat that bad. And, but you're not going to get it. And I told him, and he decided to come out personal. He just now opened up uh, a can of a bear, meaning now you're going to lose even worse. Right, right. He opened up... <laughs> he opened up a can of a bear. And it's a tiny bear. It's very cute, actually. It fits about the size of, like, a, a pinky toe or something. But you don't want to open that can. Because if that bear comes out... I have to admit, as sad as it would be to see this man elected to the Senate, would be pretty funny. I mean, <laughs> him asking questions at a subcommittee hearing on forestry. <laughs> Maybe even worth our certain doom, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the inside of Herschel Walker's head is basically a bag of loose Scrabble tiles. Um, and speaking of the mentally unsound, Kanye West had another... <laughs> a very busy week. Kanye announced he was going... Uh, Death Con 3 on Jewish people, and then some worried that might lead to a wave of anti-Semitism. Well, this was on the 405 on Saturday on the freeway here in Los Angeles. Uh, members of a local neighborhood hate group spent the day on an overpass making Nazi salutes with signs that say things like, Honk if you know Kanye is right about the Jews. And here's the thing, if you're at home making a banner that includes the words, Kanye is right, just go ahead and jump off the overpass. <laughs> so anyway, my wife and the kids and I were on the 405 this weekend, and I think we may have been behind Kanye West. Do you, do you know, do you think... <laughs> my wife took this picture. Does he drive a Honda Civic? Does anyone know? <laughs> I looked it up when I got home. Turns out Nazi, N-O-T-S-I, is a language spoken primarily in New Guinea, or at least I hope that's what it is. <laughs> if that is what it is, the guy driving that car must be very confused about all the dirty looks he's getting. <laughs> On a more positive note, uh, the number one film in the world is 
Dwayne The Rock Johnson's new superhero movie, Black Adam. And whenever a blockbuster of this magnitude hits theaters, we ask our in-house movie critic, Yaya, to review it for us. And uh, happens to be Yaya's birthday today. Where is Yaya today? Do you know Guillermo? I think he's in Egypt. He's in Egypt, right. OK, so well, he's in Egypt, but um, here he is uh, somehow talking about the movie Black Adam. It's me, Yaya. I talk about the new movie, uh, Black Adam. The, the movie is The Rock in the movie. The Rock also, his really name, Don Johnson. It's all action, all hero, marble movie. Oh, no marble, OK. Ooh, the Justice Society. Who's on the team? Here we go. The guy in the movie, he's older now, Ross Brosner, 007. <laughs> oh, he's in the, also the movie Robert William. He dressed like the mom because his wife, she gave him hard time. And uh, also, is the, the other guy in the superhero, Big Bird. Also, the lady, she's in the movie, uh, Viol David. She do the movie with Denzel Washington, Bell Defense. Don Johnson is another movie with uh, Kevin Hart, you know, the one in the, the zoo, Django Bango. <laughs> and he's in the movie with the guy, uh, Trouble A, with Paul Walker and the other guy with the car, like, uh, fast, who win. <laughs> and also, he's in the movie, like, the driving the boat uh, in Disneyland. Yeah. He's also in the movie with Zach Afran. The people running the beach, and he's the like lifeguard. I used to work lifeguard, and I'm a young boy. And the rock also is wrestling, and he come actor. And also the wrestling guy John Cena's, and he come actor too. That when he's wrestling, he say the rock is is cooking something. Can you smell it? It smell good. You want this? Go see the movie. It's a good movie. I kneel before no one. And, uh, and you don't like it? The rock punch you in the ass. <laughs> Up to you.